It's been over 110 days since Israel's genocidal war on Gaza began and there continues to be no respite for the people of Gaza. Reports have emerged of Israel creating some kind of a barrier by destroying Palestinian houses and other structures in the region. Meanwhile, reports have also emerged of talks about a ceasefire. Although Israeli government officials have been lashing out against Qatar, which is reportedly the mediator of these talks. We go to Abdul for the latest on these developments. Thanks for joining us, Abdul. It's been over 110 days since the war began and the brutal Israeli offensive continuing. So first, maybe could you take us through what is the nature of the offensive right now? The Israeli effort that is taking place also talk about, you know, constructing some, or not constructing as much as destroying so much territory as to create some kind of a barrier as well. Uh, let's start with the uh, Israeli, so-called Israeli uh, uh, fence, which is uh, which Israel has been creating for last few days. Uh, f in fact, few weeks uh, while destroying hundreds of Palestinian houses on the in the in the border regions. The border when we are talking about is the border between 1948 Israel and Gaza. And uh, now it is revealed that uh, Israel Israel plans to make a one kilometer deep buffer inside the Palestinian territory, uh, apparently for security purposes. Uh, of course, uh, 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 this has. Uh, political and uh, 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 basically political and strategic ramifications, pri primarily because uh, the so-called buffer has not been uh, accepted, is not acceptable in the international law, not acceptable by the UN resolutions, not acceptable by the Palestinians, of course, and even US, uh, Israel's closest ally, has basically uh, uh, denied any, uh, uh, at least in public, denied any Israeli claims to create any kind of uh, land uh, occupation inside uh, uh, the current uh, Gaza. So yeah, that is happening. Apart from that, uh, the Israeli attacks in Khan Yunis continues. There was a, a strike on one of the UN shelters uh, on um, Wednesday, which killed around nine uh, people. Uh, and this is nothing new. This has happened before. Uh, several times, Israeli forces have attacked UN shelters and killed people, including the humanitarian uh, staff, which is working to provide humanitarian assistance to Palestinians. Uh, and apparently, Israel is claiming now, after the global criticism of this attack, that this, uh, this has nothing to do with the IDF, and it is basically carried out by Hamas. Similar tactics as it has used in the past uh, when it the uh, one of the hospitals in the initial days of war was attacked basically it accused hamas uh, uh, not uh, basically in order to kind of shift the responsibility uh, apart from that of course uh, if you see the uh, in terms of the number of palestinian casualties increasing every day close it is close to 26000 now and uh, uh, and number of wounded in particular has increased to 64,000 at this moment when we are talking. And it, it is increasing every hour. Uh, uh, in, uh, among all of this, there is a, a talk of kind of, uh, which was basically in the last few days, it came, it surfaced that there is an attempt to kind of uh, achieve some kind of uh, uh, two months truce between Israel and Hamas uh, in exchange of the hostages. But it seems that as a, that has led to a major diplomatic uh, uh, kind of tussle between Qataris and Israeli government because Israel has refused uh, uh, to entertain Qataris' proposals, in fact, even accusing uh, that it is basically sheltering Hamas. So this is the uh, latest uh, from the ground. Abdul, also generally, since you mentioned Qatar, also trying to, let's take a look maybe at the regional situation. We do know that, of course, tensions remain high in uh, in the red sea region as well so what has been happening in the region as a whole and why is the you know are, are there any more reports of what the ceasefire mediation attempts or uh, are really heading towards have they collapsed entirely well the qataris are claiming that they continue to pursue the talks uh, uh, despite uh, uh, Netanyahu completely accusing them of kind of uh, sheltering as i said before hamas um, uh, in fact, on uh, on on Thursday itself, uh, one of the ministers in Israeli uh, in Netanyahu government re reiterated its accusation uh, against Qatar about sheltering Hamas, funding it, and so on and so forth. But at the same time, uh, one should not remember that the Israeli government is also under tremendous pressure from the people 
in, in the country, particularly the relatives of the hostages who have been uh, protesting against uh, Netanyahu government's policies of no negotiations, no uh, attempts to kind of uh, exchange the hostages and so on and so forth. And there are large scale demonstrations taking place inside Israel, basically demanding uh, a ceasefire and exchange of hostages. This, uh, one should remember, was not the case in the very uh, first three, four, mo three months uh, of Israeli war in Gaza. And this is basically also reflects the popular mood in Israel is basically gradually shifting towards uh, uh, some kind of uh, peace, some kind of uh, uh, ceasefire. So yeah, uh, apart from that, uh, uh, of course, when it comes to Red Sea, uh, the Houthis continue to attack uh, the Israel-bound ships uh, as they have claimed. In fact, uh, on on Wednesday, they claimed that they, in fact, they engaged uh, there uh, uh, with the U.S. Uh, uh, naval forces and, in fact, attacked directly hit one of the warships, U.S. warships. One should remember that UN and U sorry, U.S. and U.K. are jointly attacking uh, uh, Yemen for last uh, almost a week, more than a week now, and they have carried out repeatedly carried out attacks inside uh, 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 Palace, uh, sorry, inside Yemen, and uh, uh, and despite those attacks. Uh, Houthis have not stopped their uh, uh, attacks on the ships as they have claimed earlier. And and in fact, uh, on Thursday, Yahya Shari, one of the spokesperson of Houthis, have claimed that th the attacks will continue in the future as well. Uh, apart from that, the, there are uh, increasing pressure uh, on the U.S., different U.S. bases, uh, U.S. assets seen as supporting the war, uh, Israeli war in Gaza. Uh, 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 there is a repeated uh, set of uh, repeated attacks on its bases across Syria and Iraq. And uh, in fact, U.S. carried out another set of bombings inside Iraq, despite Iraqi government repeatedly saying that such attacks leads to the violation of its sovereignty. Nevertheless, this, these attacks and counterattacks has created a possibility of the withdrawal of U.S. troops from Syria and Iraq, as there are reports coming that U.S. is under tremendous pressure to withdraw its forces uh, from Syria at least for now, and there are talks beginning uh, uh, about his, uh, his troops withdrawal from Iraq as well. So if we just see the regional uh, aspect, uh, 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 despite U.S. attempts to portray that it is working for the de-escalation and uh, restricting of the war to Gaza itself, is, it's not, it, it is playing one of the most active roles in escalation of the war at the regional level. And because of that, there are greater involvement of the regional players, particularly the uh, militias, resist, what we call the axis of resistance uh, against the US and Israeli uh, 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 war inside Gaza. Right. Thank you so much, Abdul, for the update. And that's all we have time for today. We'll be back with a fresh episode soon. In the meanwhile, do visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org. Follow us on all the social media platforms. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button.